Hi Bart, welcome Hi, in Kevin. the studio. In the second webinar, and we teased it already a bit in the, in the first, we're gonna talk about GDPR. And then I can imagine a lot of people are thinking GDPR not again. again. <laughs> <laughs> we did all the work, it's all in order and, and so on and so on. But there is a very good reason why we're uh, talking about it again. Again, yes. First of all, we did all the work is the biggest GDPR mistake you can make because GDPR is eat, sleep, repeat. Mm -hmm. um, GDPR repeats. It's a never ending uh, cycle of compliance. Um, so that is one. Um, but, but, but the main reason is something that we've seen since the beginning of 2024. Um, there has been, at least in Belgium, um, uh, a long period since 2018 where um, there was very little um, cases um, by the Data Protection Authority, by the GBA. Um, and if you ran into trouble with the GBA, then um, the fines that you could run into were, in most cases, unless you were Facebook, uh, um, were <laughs> a few Re thousand, a few okay. thousand euros or, or a warning. And you could still consider, okay, I'll run the risk um, of not being compliant or I'll actively assume the risk of not being compliant. We'll see what happens and we'll pay if needed. Um, but since last year, um, the European Data Protection Board, the European um, um, institution that regroups all of the data protection authorities in all the, the member states, has issued um, guidelines on how to calculate fines. Um, and those gu guidelines have been applied a few times now by the, uh, the Belgian Data Protection Authority. Um, and one of the recent cases um, that was published in June shows um, the implications of that, where um, there is one complaint by one consumer that was um, unhappy about the fact that um, the deliveries that were always free in the past would now cost one euro and 50 cents for, uh, for a delivery. Um, and he sent an email saying he didn't want to be a client anymore. He wanted uh, all of his data um, deleted. And because of technical issues, um, clumsiness in the setup of the databases, basically that, and, and a lack of um, awareness in, in, in it with staff also uh, his email or his data didn't get deleted in time he received two more newsletters two more emails and then by a, a human mistake his telephone number was added to a telephone list where they try to reactivate clients um, so he asked his, his data to be uh, deleted and he still got the mails and he got called um, and he filed a complaint and what we see in in, in those recent complaints is that if the, the data protection authorities start to implement those um guidelines on calculating fines you end up with fines with ridiculous amounts this one case by mm -hmm. one client who wanted to be who no longer wanted to be a client and wanted this data deleted that one complaint um even though it sh the investigation showed that there was a technical issue because the data wasn't erased and there was a human mistake because mm -hmm. it got so it was more than just huh? but still only one complaint 278,000 euro of fine 278,000 euro of fine. And the fines are always calculated based on the turnover of the company. So if you're a small company, it might also have been 100,000 or 150,000. If you were you bigger, get <laughs> you get a discount, but still we're no longer talking about 2,000, 5,000, 10,000 euros of fine. We're now talking amounts that run into hundred thousands of euros for one yeah, that's a terrifying customer. Uh, yes. fact. You can, you can be in order for so many yeah. of those, those requests yeah. and you, Fuck up with one of them and... Yeah, we have two other cases uh, pending now um, where the, there is an investigation or procedure in with the Data Protection Authority, the GBA, that are both um, initiated by one unhappy customer, one unhappy client um, who received an email that he didn't want to receive, he or she, um, and that files a complaint. And what we see now is that in the past, if you filed that type of complaint, there was almost no follow-up. And now apparently that is enough to start an investigation, start a formal proceeding. Um, and even if you manage to convince the Data Protection Authority in that proceeding that you did nothing wrong and that it doesn't lead to a fine, the legal fees, the time loss, the, the energy invested will cost you thousands of euros. Um, that mm -hmm. is better spent, I think, in, um, I don't know, a better AdWords campaign or whatever. <laughs> in, 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 indeed, there are more productive things <laughs> yeah, to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
if you look at GDPR, there are several several rights uh, a user has: uh, right to be forgotten, right to to to, to change uh, or update data, right to uh, have portability of data, and then I think two others I forget now. You've got a right to access, a right of copy. I don't yeah. want to know what what data you are treating, uh, what data you are processing. I want a copy of that data. We have another case pending there, by the way, <clears throat> where. Um, uh, somebody asks for a copy of all of their data and uh, you have to be able to, to to provide that within 30 days and for some reason that didn't happen um, because also I think a lot of awareness uh, a lack of awareness a lack of knowledge with uh, with the company involved um, who replied we have your email address and your name and all the rest is none of your business um, she filed a complaint as well uh, with the data protection authority and there as well there is a, a case pending now um, where we expect a fine of again. And what, what other data was expected then? Orders, uh, mm -hmm. that kind of uh, stuff? Order history, um, all analytics, basically also that is linked to, to her specifically. If you have a, if you have a, a user ID that is uh, Tracks, link, yeah. linked to, to the person uh, involved, all email conversations, all internal notes and, and, and conversations, um, basically anything that's in your CRM where very often there is an open field <laughs> mm -hmm. where you can describe the conversations you had with the clients. Um, be aware that that as well may end up in the hands of the client. So be careful in, 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 <laughs> in, in the words you use. Um, so yes, everything that's in your accounting, um, basically, basically everything you have that is related to that person. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask you, is it typically always the right to be forgotten uh, that leads uh, to complaints? But no, you answered already. Yes, no, 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 no. And the thing is, if an investigation is, uh, is, is initiated, um, it will never be limited to that request by that customer. Um, the DPA will always look broader. Um, did I take the necessary technical measures to ensure data protection? Did I take the, the necessary organizational measures? Access limitations, for instance, um, um, data retention periods. Huh? Are you not uh, saving data for too long? That's something on GDPR that, that when it comes to e-commerce that, that, that we have to talk to about in a few seconds, I think. Do you have uh, data processing agreements with all of your partners? Um, but that's also an important one eh? because I see a lot of hesitance still on parties who are they, they seem not to be willing to sign such yeah. a thing where, yeah. where it is something that can really help you. Yes. Uh, reluctance to signing data protection, uh, data processing uh, agreements is something that I look at in amazement every day again. And the discussions we have around points and commas in, in, in those agreements is, is almost ridiculous. And we see a lot of companies that refuse to accept that they are a data processor. I think that very often it is, as, as with all things GDPR, a lack of knowledge, but also some kind of um, professional proudness in which they don't want to be just a processor. They want to be a controller because that sounds more fancy. Uh, very often it's that, I think. We've had a discussion with a few um, lead generators, for instance, with uh, um, a few affiliate marketing um, uh, agencies that refuse to see themselves as a data processor, whereas it's very, off, very obvious that they are generating leads, processing data on behalf of, in execution of an order that was given by the client, mm -hmm. but they refuse to sign a data processing agreement. And there as well, you have to know that there is a decision by the Data Protection Authority that dates from November last year, in which they very explicitly say that starting a collaboration without a priorly signed data processing agreements will lead to the liability of both parties involved. Um, so not only the data controller, but also the processor can run into fines by the sheer fact that there is no data processing agreement and that it wasn't signed before starting the work. And that is an issue mm -hmm. very often where the, the work is already started, the project is finished, and then, oh yeah, by the way, we still need to sign. But that means that with every party that touches any personal data of any of your customers yes. or even internal people, because yes. you can also have a tool that, for example, just uh, provides HR services where your employees are in, with all those parties, you should have a DPA. With, with, with external partners, yes, yes. 
Um, and um, it's it's not always obvious. One, what you need to do is document. You need a, a, a vendor assessment um, where you list all of uh, the parties that you work with, where you examine if there is any personal data being exchanged or accessed, where you also examine where the partner is located outside the EU or not, where you examine if there is a data processing agreement in place, where you try to check that data processing agreement that is offered by the vendor um, on a, a checklist that you've established for yourself with minimum requirements. Huh? What do I need in that agreement to make sure that I am covered? Um, or where you try to use your own template uh, data processing agreement. So there's an exercise on, on mapping to be done. Um, and uh, also awareness to be raised with the partners that you work with, trying to explain to them that it's everybody's, uh, it should be everybody's uh, concern to have the agreement signed because everybody um, runs into uh, potential risks by not signing it because of the fines, but also because of the, the risk of a data breach at some point. Uh, and eight out of 10 data breaches occur with partners, not with the data controller, but with the data processor. Um, and as, as, as with all things legal, a good agreement will help avoid uh, legal discussions when it mm -hmm. comes to, 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 to the consequences of, for instance, a data breach. Yeah, but of course, next to making that list and that assessment of what partners are proce are processing your data it's also about what what is it uh, of data that you are processing and do you actually need all that data it's, yeah there are a few basic principles in gdpr that every web shop should every marketing department every every sales department as well in, in outside of of, of e-commerce should uh, try to to apply, do a check on, on their database, it's data minimization. GDPR always starts from the idea that less is more. And if you don't absolutely need a certain data field, if you don't need to know my shoe size, not only you should not process my shoe size, but you can't, you, you can't even ask it. Even if mm -hmm. I would be prepared to share it with you, you don't need it, so you can't ask it. It's, it's the, the opposite idea of the big data hype uh, a few years ago, where let's just collect everything we'll can, and we'll yeah. try to figure out afterwards what we'll do with it. <laughs> GDPR is the opposite. Um, for, for every, that means that, for instance, on, 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 on forms, on websites, you should run a check to see what do we ask in a form? Is it really necessary to ask all of that information? If somebody just wants to register for a newsletter, you don't need their physical address. You only need the email. So don't ask for the physical address because GDPR will oppose to that. Um, data retention times are a very important basic principle. What is acceptable in, in, in e-commerce? Very hard to say. Um, what we know um, is that there has been a major fine for Discord, which is not e-commerce, but a social media communication platform in France, uh, for not deleting inactive accounts. Um, so the question is, when does an account become inactive? And I think it all depends on the type of services of the type or the type of products that you sell. Um, if you are, are um, uh, the, the, the Tesla website, uh, people buy a new car every so many years. So inactivity for four, five, six years will be acceptable, I think. But in fast mo moving consumer goods, somebody that hasn't bought anything in five years is no longer a client and mm -hmm. the, 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 the the account should have been deleted a long time ago. Um, so it's an individual exercise to be made uh, company by company, product by product, service by service, um, which is important because the, the, I don't know the exact amount of the fine for Discord in France, but it ran into the millions of euros. Hmm? Yeah. Talking about accounts brings me to a pressing issue in e-commerce today. The fact that a lot of e-commerce websites are pushing people or forcing people to create an account in order to be able to place an order. Um, whereas basic GDPR uh, principles um, would require, would always require the possibility to order, to, to, to buy with a guest checkout. Yeah. Uh, because um, creating a, an account is um, giving consent to process data for later purposes. That consent has to be free. Free means that I have to be able to say no, to not give the account and still be able to make the purchase. And if I say no to data sharing for future purposes in an account, then the consequence is that I have to have 
possibility order in a guest mm -hmm. account that is only used for that order and where you can keep my data for the 14 day schooling off period for the two year warranty and then it has to it has to disappear but you can't store my data in an organized account i see a lot of reluctance with uh, web shops to um, apply that logic but it will at some point lead to ridiculous fines so that's something that you really have yeah. to another thing where there were a lot of discussions is whether you could have european data on american uh, or us uh, servers yes and that also means we all use google we all use facebook we all use uh, what's the status there well the status is that for the time being um the issue is solved the entire issue came from the fact that we had um, um, uh, a treaty, a framework agreement between the European Union and the United States, in which the United States government promised that um, any data crossing the ocean would be treated with the same degree of confidentiality in the US as it would have been in, in, in Europe. The problem was that... Um, the U.S. has very f flexible national security laws <laughs> that allows <laughs> access. That, that, also, that, depending on the president. <laughs> that allow access. Yeah, well, you'd be surprised. Um, <laughs> because uh, it was President Biden last year that extended um, the possibility for national, uh, the, the NSA, the National Security Agency, to gain access to uh, to. to to systematically monitor data entering the, uh, the the U.S., so it's not always um, the the right wing presidents that have <laughs> the, the strictest. Um, so the the problem there was the European Court of Justice at one point said the entire agreement between the U.S. and the EU is built on false promises because they promise the same amount of data protection, but at the same time they have laws giving access to all data um, entering yep. the country. And if you have a web shop selling shoes and you have the shoe, sh the shoe size and you know that I usually buy white sneakers, then that is not very sensitive information. Um, but there's a lot of information, of course, crossing the ocean that is very uh, sensitive. So that uh, that, treat, that that treaty, that, that agreement was uh, terminated from one day to the next, uh, three years ago now, four years ago. Um, and, and that created the problem with uh, the fact that there was no legal yeah. framework that allowed the data transfer, but we were all using American services. Last summer, a new treaty was signed um, between the US and the EU, so the, 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 the situation is now stabilized again. We can exchange data. The problem is that this is the third time that the treaty is signed, and the first was the um, safe harbor principle, then there was the privacy shield, and now we have the EU-US privacy framework. Different names, but they are still based on the same premises, the same level of protection, and they still face the same issue. The NSA, the FBI, the CIA can read everything that crosses the ocean. So we are now waiting. GDPR specialists, legal um, uh, specialists are now waiting for the first complaints to be filed and to reach the European Court of Justice, where the same decision will be taken most likely next year. Does it in two help years. that in the meantime, uh, a lot of states in, in, in the states are also implementing some sort of gdpr law that's yes but that will not solve the problem because the the main issue the main problem is national security laws in the us mm -hmm. um, and as long as they don't change that as long as they can't make sure that um they only access data in the context of specific um, anti-terrorism uh, investigations with a prior legal um, authorization by a judge, uh, limit to certain if there are uh, safeguards that make sure that all of our data is private unless now the the, the parting point is everything can be scanned. Hmm? Yeah. Um, as long as that issue isn't solved, the issue won't 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 go away. So that means that today you can use Google Analytics without an issue. You can use. Um, uh, um, Office 365 without an issue. You can use uh, Mailchimp. I mean, all of all of uh, everything that's US based is okay for the time being, but always with um, the, the the pending issue um, that next year or in two years um, you may be faced with the same problem and you may have to shift to European uh, um, providers. So our legal advice um, to our clients has been for the past three or four years. To run a good check on um, on the the suppliers that you want to work with, see if there is any data export to the US. Um, if there is, 
try to see if there is an alternative that is EU based. Um, and if there is, and it offers the same um, specs and it has a similar yeah. price, then use the, the EU based uh, alternative. Or make sure it's stored on European servers. That, that's all, that, that, yeah. that's the first thing. But even there, um, if the data is stored on European services, but by an, Amer an American company, U.S. Um, security laws will still um, contain clauses that force those American companies to give access to data stored on European uh, servers, so that is no absolute guarantee. Also, be aware that the issue is not limited to the U.S. If you were, if you export data to Australia, Japan, South Korea, South Africa, whatever, um, the same issue will arise. So, what you have to do is have a good. We come, we come back to the the vendor assessment that I talked about before. You need to know who you're sharing data with. You need to know where they are, and you need to make sure that it is legally covered. But uh, in some cases, uh, Google Analytics is, is 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 a choice because you have good alternatives. But if you want to do business online, you need, for example, uh, Google Ads uh, and 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 things like uh, like that and that kind of services. So it's also a very fine balance to make. Sometimes you need those, those I know, services. I know. And it's very easy to replace your Google Analytics by um, by, by a Pivik Pro, Matomo, um, um, by, by, by a few other uh, good um, uh, analytics tools that are in the market. Um, but indeed, if you're in the Google, um, how should I say, ecosystem, then it's very hard to, to shift from just to Google Analytics to another service because it will have an impact on your on your online marketing and it's not an easy decision to make for a lot of companies. Um, I know, uh, and but in that case, at least you should be aware of the potential impact uh, from a legal perspective. You should be aware of the instability of the situation. Um, you should be aware of the potential fines. And if you know what you're getting into, at least you can yep. calculate risk. That's, that's, that's yep. an important one, I think. Indeed. Anything else we need to add on the GDPR topic? Well, the important thing I think is the warning for um, the uh, the accounts. Um, don't make people uh, create an account. If you do, deactivate them in time. Very important. What we've seen over the past few years is also the the the, the, the deletion uh, if needed. Mm. Yeah. Um, what I said the, the very first remark I made: um, GDPR is not something that you do once. Um, and uh, we are compliant now, we did the necessary work. It's a continuous exercise. Um, basically, every new um, initiative you take, every new, um, we're going to, um, we didn't have an app so far, um, everybody does, mm -hmm. but anyway, we're going to launch an app now. Make sure to have the legal check done, the GPR check before you get started. Uh, we're um, moving from uh, the old website to a newer one. Um, make sure that you do the, the GDPR exercise uh, up front. Are we going to process new data? Are there new vendors? Is there new technology involved? Is there anything that we need to document in time? So that is uh, a, a continuous um, awareness that should be that should be. Uh, yeah, and talk and talk with somebody legal who knows this uh, field of expertise. It's it's a very specific field of expertise. Not everybody has a data protection officer, um, and if you if you do, they should be um, brought into a lot of discussions where they're kept out of today. They should be involved a lot more in the day to day operations. And if you don't have a data protection officer, make sure that you have um, legal advice on the standby. Um, I don't want to make publicity for what we do, but we have. Yeah, but you can. <laughs> we have a GDPR help desk service where you pay a fixed amount um, uh, on 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 a monthly basis to have permanent access for every stupid little question. Can I do this? Is it okay to do that? They want me to sign this agreement. Is it okay? So that you can make GDPR compliance part of your day-to-day -day operations mm -hmm. um, because uh, we talked about the amount of the fines. It's ridiculous uh, to, yeah. to run re uh, financial risks. Um, and what is very important, I think, for, as, for, for a company, what should motivate you as a company is, um, and, and I've said this on so many occasions, that is that in an online uh, environment, it's very hard to gain people's trust. And what you want to do as a company is make sure that your clients are um, returning clients um, in the long term, that will trust your, your brand, that will promote your brand, that are ready to share data 
with your brand because they trust mm -hmm. and the more you know about people the more relevant your message can be the more uh, precise your message can be and the more trust you will generate the more sales you will create so it's it's a it's a circle uh, of, of trust that has to build GDPR is at the core of that trust. Data mm -hmm. protection is at the core of that trust. So it's not only legal compliance, it's using data protection laws that a lot of marketeers see as a constraint, as an obligation, using it as a tool. And as an opportunity. To, to, and yeah. an opportunity to grow your business. Okay. Thank you, Bart, for You're all welcome. those insights. Hey, Tom, thank you for watching. I hope to see you in the next webinar.